Well then, happy holidays, everybody. I hope you're having a relaxing end of year season. I myself, right now, I imagine I should be either boarding an airplane from Nashville to Minnesota that hopefully wasn't delayed due to all the snow, or I have already landed and I'm cozying up next to a fire in Minnesota with my family. But before I left, I wanted to do a couple leaks for you all. The first one was, of course, about Titan Atta Lovelace, and that's already out. That leak was saved for the end of the year, both to protect my sources and because I just didn't feel like it was something that needed to be rushed out. I was just pretty confident that the sources that got me dead on Lovelace performance information and 4070 and Titan pictures were just... Not sources anyone else really have even remotely close to access to that tier of information. And there was no need to rush out stuff that, if rushed out too soon, could endanger some of those best sources. So, I don't know. I, I'd actually just say that, in general, lately I'm feeling less and less rushed to get information out these days compared to ever before. Well, I think it's obvious, I hope it is, that I've gotten more and more cautious and responsible with my leaks as time has gone on, especially compared to my some of my embarrassing earlier work. Next year, I'm just going to say you guys can expect me to be even more cautious about being first on some things since, well, it's just gotten to the point where being first on a leak from AMD or NVIDIA is pointless if there's any degree of uncertainty when I can always probably do some other leak in the meantime that has zero uncertainty uncertainty. Like, I was the first to leak Little Phoenix, but I misunderstood some of the specs from the cache that I was told, and, well, I had to correct it. I don't really want to have to do that anymore. At least I want it to happen even more rarely than this year. Although, you know, there's one company that I'm not sure is ever going to be safe from needing corrections and frequent updates. That company, as you can tell from the lights, is, of course, Intel. This company has become so chaotic and inconsistent with what goals they achieve and what projects they do or don't cancel that I just don't feel like I can ever bet my life on anything they say they are doing actually panning out like they say they are going to. I, I just don't think I can. I'm starting to wonder if in all my Intel leaks, I should hesitate to ever put the deeper colored text that, of course, from me, uh, denotes a lot of confidence because I just don't have confidence in anything Intel's doing happening like they say they will. Now, a lot of people might say right now that you should do the same thing with Radeon after what's transpired with RDNA 3. But honestly, guys, it's not even comparable to what's going on with products Intel's trying to launch. Sure, Navi 31 products so far have fallen about 20% below what expectations, at least for me, not certainly not from the insane things other people said, it's fallen about 20% short of what I expected. Uh, but, you know, there's signs this thing can be massively improved with updated drivers to better utilize the compute units and make some of the great performance we're seeing in some games become the performance we see in more games. And I also think that there's some things they can do with firmware and drivers to fix the bad boost clock stuff we're seeing that Tech Power Up has proved if you can fix, you can get this thing to perform already pretty close to a 4090 a lot of the time. That's just not the type of falling flat we've seen out of Intel with Alchemist, Sapphire Rapids, or indeed, as I'm going to talk about today, Meteor Lake. They keep failing to deliver on even remotely releasing things when they said they will. AMD got RDNA 3 out in 2022, and their performance claims aren't 20% flat. They're oftentimes just wildly off from what they were clearly trying to hit, you know, when they started their projects. And yeah, unfortunately, I did say Alchemist, Sapphire Rapids, and Meteor Lakes. I am now getting close to including Meteor Lake in the same categories as problem products like Arc and Sapphire Rapids. And that's what this video is going to be about. But first, let me recap it a little bit, the whole saga with Meteor Lake, at least from my perspective. For those who don't remember, I was the first to leak Redwood Cove being used in Meteor Lake back in late 2020. Yes, it's already been two years since that video, if you can believe it. And back then, all that I was really new and was clear about is that 
Meteor Lake was expected to bring another solid IPC increase gen over gen, and it would probably focus on not ramping up core counts, but being the first big new tiled mainstream design that focused on efficiency and next-gen features more so than ramping up multi-threading performance like Raptor Lake and Alder Lake have focused on over their predecessors. So it seemed exciting from the standpoint that it was their first attempt at full disaggregation in a consumer architecture and that it would be really efficient, but it didn't seem like it was going to be some kind of like Alder Lake level blowing out in performance increases over the previous gen. And then, of course, as time went on, I leaked more details about its accelerators and what it was planning to hopefully compete with if it came out on time. And the updates just continued with some regrettably being rushed out probably before they should have been. And some others, though, coming out with a lot of effort put into it that at least pointed to like it was planning to compete with Zen 4 before Zen 5 was even out in 2024. And yeah, in that Panther Lake leak that I put a lot of effort into getting right, guys, 6 plus 16, I know that doesn't sound fantastic. 6 big cores, 16 little cores is what they were, it seemed like at the time, planning to go with. But it was expected, even if it was just 6 big cores, to still beat Raptor Lake at everything while consuming half the energy and offering snazzy new accelerators. But now, just like I had to correct going from 8 plus 16 to 6 plus 16... I now have to correct it again, as it seems like there's a decent chance Meteor Lake is just not going to launch remotely close to the top tier desktop performance I was hoping they were going to in those other leaks. And uh, yeah, make no mistake, it seems like Intel is going to try to launch a, some Meteor Lake products next year, but I don't think they're going to be even remotely as exciting as, well, as Intel initially planned for them to be. I'm going to talk about it, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Jessie here doesn't really have busy days. Her mornings consist of napping and staring out of windows. Her evenings consist of bone chewing and running around the backyard. Now that's very different from me, especially during the holiday season where I'm usually forced to cram so I have plenty of content to provide you all while I'm off on my Christmas break. And I did try it out. Rise made it easier, or at the very least, made me more aware of my imperfect working habits. Today's piece of content is sponsored by Rise. Rise is an intelligent time tracker that improves your focus and helps you build better work habits. It automatically tracks and categorizes your work activity in real time, and it aims to improve your focus and tell you when you're getting off track or need a break, which honestly, it did guess correctly when I was losing focus and should probably take my lunch break. And well, that helped me prevent burnout and it helped me already get more healthy work habits, which I can't imagine how much Jesse here, who can't seem to hold her attention for more than five seconds, could use Rise, and I bet you could use it too. If you use the link in the description, just click on that or use the offer code on screen, you will really be helping out your own productivity and the Moore's Law is Dead channel. The first 1,000 people to click on the link or use the offer code get 25% off their first three months. Even just clicking on this link helps a lot, but using the app with that offer code helps even more. It can help your productivity like it helped mine. Try Rise today. All right, before I get to the new information I'm leaking in this video, there is one thing I need to get out of the way first, and that's that Intel has publicly clearly made it out like they are going to compete in the high end with Meteor Lake already when they were talking about a 125 watt variant. They've publicly said this. So forget needing to feel like you need to believe any leaks I put out about LGA 1851 or the leaks other people have also put out about that, that it's real, but you don't even need to know about those leaks. You know that Intel has publicly said they're using the Intel 4 node, that Meteor Lake focuses on efficiency, and that they were going to have a 125-watt product. That clearly means they wanted a flagship desktop product to compete with Zen 4 X3D. And yeah, I don't think that's really what they're going to be able to do anymore. Now, to be honest, they may still launch, from what I'm hearing, a 125-watt product, and it pains me to say this, but this might be a Rocket Lake situation. You know, Zen 4 X3D versus Meteor Lake may be like what happened with Zen 2 and Zen 3, where Intel really couldn't respond with anything reasonable. They just kept rebranding their previous generation. I think there's going to be a Raptor Lake refresh against Zen 4 X3D that, just like Comet Lake, won't impress people very much. And then I think they're going to have a lower core count pseudo mid-range platform with Meteor Lake on desktop that will pretend that it's high-end, even though I think we all know, compared to Zen 4 X3D, 
and possibly Zen 5, this thing's not going to look high-end at all. Let me show you this quote here from one of my best sources at Intel's. This person tells me that at this point, both the 8 plus 16 and 6 plus 16 tile configurations, which remember the way Meteor Lake works is you take a big little CPU tile that you can use either a bigger one or a little one. It seems like that top tile configuration is canceled or just not guaranteed at a minimum and that they seem to kind of be considering using the top 6 plus 8 laptop die as also the top configuration for desktop. The reason this is a conclusion I'm starting to come to is LGA 1851 still seems to be in active development for launching the first half of 2024, and the marketing and, let's just say, the materials within Intel right now discussing how to sell Meteor Lake are talking about marketing a new mid-range i5 and i7 generation for gamers on LGA 1851, not in 2023, but in the first half of 2024. And no i9 is mentioned. Now, do not misunderstand me. I hope that either my sources have missed that there's something going on that suggests 8 plus 16 or 6 plus 16 development is still continuing, but I don't think there is. And I also hope that Intel is just decided some other higher core count configuration and hopefully i'll have a leak in a month or something talking about an even higher core count than 8 plus 16 that intel has started for meteor lake but it doesn't seem like that's what's going on i'll tell you if that happens but so far it honestly to me seems that something has gone entirely wrong with the development of the desktop config and that Intel may be deciding that because they're going to have a new workstation platform, as I also leaked before, you know, Fishhawk Falls, that we'll get Golden Cove, Raptor Cove, and even Redwood Cove Plus workstation chips with dozens of cores that they might say, well, if you want more than 6 plus 8, get workstation. And if you don't, if you're a gamer or most people, six big cores and eight little cores, you know, 14 cores total, that's more than enough for most people. I, that might just be what Intel's deciding to do in 2024. But, it, you know, I would actually be okay with that too if they called the top configuration an i5. It would honestly be interesting, wouldn't it, if Intel launched a flagship desktop generation where they're like, hey, the top chip is only 350, it's only an i5, and it's kind of bringing you Zen 5 gaming performance early. We're not going to bother with the higher core count stuff. If you want LGA 1851 early, get this, and then you can upgrade to way higher core count, Arrow Lake and then Panther Lake in a year or two. If they were doing that, I wouldn't have a big issue. The problem is that I hear that they're thinking of calling the top CPU and i7, which means they're probably going to try to overclock that six core, those six big cores so hard that they get to a ridiculous amount of power usage and still lose to AMD. And uh, yeah, I guess I just hope they don't do that. I hope they don't decide to try to sell a core count configuration that was clearly initially intended to be the i5 as an i7 simply because they screwed up. And speaking of screwing up, here comes a quote from another source that gave me a bit more detail on what's probably going wrong with Meteor Lake Desktop. This individual told me that the group working on the desktop version just wasn't executing successfully. Now, this person had other words that they used to describe how they were executing, but if it was going to be quoted, this person wanted me to put it this way, and this was the nicest way they could put it. This person also told me that Meteor Lake Mobile, though, was a different story, that if it wasn't for issues with the Intel 4 node, which, you heard me correctly, guys, it sounds like Intel 4 is having minor issues, but they're minor so far, and so they do think that they'll be able to launch Meteor Lake Laptop by quarter four and hopefully by quarter three of 2023, that if it wasn't for the Intel 4 issues, that they would have this out sooner, and that actually this person is far more worried about Intel 3 that's going to be used in Granite Rapids and Arrow Lake. Which, remember, Intel needs Granite Rapids in the first half of 2024 to remain even remotely competitive with what AMD will have with Zen 5 Turin at the time. And also, I gotta say, there's a good chance that the design teams at Intel may be thinking right now that it's okay to cancel the flagship desktop Meteor Lake core tile if they think 
Arrow Lake will be ready within a couple quarters. They may be saying to themselves, oh, well, we'll just get out the 6 plus 8 die config for the i5s, and then in a couple months we'll follow up with the i7 and i9 Arrow Lakes that'll be right around the corner. If they're not around the corner, I think this could turn into a complete disaster and one that is very reminiscent of the miscommunications between Intel foundries and their design teams like what we've been seeing for years now. And so... This person doesn't know what marketing will pretend. God knows that Intel may act like Meteor Lake's out in January and it doesn't even really come out until quarter four. Huh, what other product did they do that with recently? But at the end of the day, in reality, we will be lucky to see Meteor Lake in laptop in quarter three and some mid-range version of Meteor Lake on desktop in the first half of 2024 if the desktop variant isn't entirely canceled, and it might be. And a lot of this is due to bugs with the desktop design, Intel 4 node having issues, and this person is even more worried about issues with the Intel 3 node. And so there you go. That's what I wanted to make sure I updated you guys on before the end of the year, because God knows other people may leak similar details eventually. And then I just want you guys to know that I have already heard this depressing news about Meteor Lake already, and you guys should all know this if you're planning to do builds at any specific time over the next two years, that the landscape may look very bad for Intel and extra expensive for AMD. I certainly hope I'm wrong, and I'll leak to you guys if I hear anything else. I certainly hope Intel in reality is about to start some even higher core count variant than what I initially leaked, and that that will be able to come out at the end of 2023 and not in the first half of 2024. But right now, it sounds like Intel's got basically nothing but Raptor Lake against 4 nanometer Phoenix and Zen 4 X3D on desktop and laptop. It's going to be a bloodbath in 2023, and in 2024, they're going to if we're lucky, start the year with like an i5 to compete with Zen 5 coming out just a few months later with way higher core counts, probably higher IPC and way higher clocks. And I don't know. I guess we're most likely the scenario is we just need to hope Arrow Lake can come out on time near the end of 2024 and that those Intel 3 issues I'm being told about now don't remain issues for much longer. And if it wasn't so depressing, I got to admit it's kind of funny, though. My original Redwood Cove leak was asking if Intel could come back by the end of 2022 or hopefully by some point in 2023. And now here we are at the end of 2022, and I'm doing a video about if Intel can even survive without losing massive market share again to AMD over the next two years. Wow. But uh, yeah, I've already talked about why I think Intel is going to be in big trouble against Phoenix and Dragon Range X without Meteor Lake launching on time, which it's not. So check out those other pieces of content to see where I'm coming from here. And uh, yeah, you'll soon get uh, more leaks out of me in early 2023 talking about why I think Intel's in a lot of trouble against AMD Strix family of products and Zen 5. I think it's going to be pretty bad, but you're just going to have to wait until 2023 for those leaks. I have got to relax for at least a week or two here near the end of the year. And uh, I just hope when I return, I have more optimistic news for you all. To make sure you don't miss those upcoming leaks, subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Uh, in recent videos, I've seen that like over 40% of you aren't subscribed let's see if we can get that other like almost half of you to join the channel before the end of the year that'd be awesome to see and if you have any extra money two dollars four dollars a month consider joining the moore's law is dead patreon you get early ad free access to all the content that will be dropping throughout the holiday season and early next year when i'm covering ces and you'll also get uh exclusive content the ability to ask me and guest questions there's, there's so much stuff out there we cannot do this type of work and we cannot afford to keep this work coming out over holiday seasons without our patrons so support us if you can but for everybody else thank you for watching <laughs>